How many believe that God could just do anything? Get ready, man. You're in, a, you're in a really good place today, and I'm so honored. But I can't believe, man, we're about four, is it four weeks, four or five weeks away from Easter? We're, and we couldn't even have service last year, so we got some makeup to do. We're going to beat the devil up this year. We're going to, and you know, you know how we're going to do that? We're going to invite everyone we know to come to church. How many by a show of hands, you have at least a friend or a family that you know they need God right now. Can you slip up your hand? A friend, a co-worker, a family. Now, this is what we're going to do. This is our responsibility, which, you know what? Turn to the scripture. This is kind of a, a, a pre-thing. Turn to the scripture, 1 Corinthians 9, 16 and 17. Pastor Marco mentioned the scripture last week. Let me mention it now. I'm just thinking about inviting people really quick to church for Easter and for marriage challenge. Look at the scripture, 1 Corinthians 9, 16 and 17. Telling the good news is not my reason for bragging. Telling the good news is my duty. It's something I must do. So sharing the good news, inviting someone to church is our responsibility. It's our duty. It's not something that we brag about. Well, I did this and I went here. That, no, it's our duty to bring people into the presence of God. So I want to challenge you. How many are up for, the, how many are up for a challenge? Anybody like challenges? All right, I've seen about seven, eight hands, depending on what I'm going to say. You're like, okay, what is he going to say? I challenge you. Look at your neighbor and tell them, pastor is challenging you right now. I challenge you. I don't know how to say that. How do you say that in Spanish? i got to learn how to say that. I challenge you. I challenge you to write down ten people that you're going to invite for Easter. How many are down for that challenge? How many think they can invite ten people? How many know ten people? Okay, you guys have to get out more. Have to get out a little more. <laughs> invite 10 people to the Easter service. It was just a, really about, I think, four weeks away or so. Invite them. And this message, you know, we're in, a, we're in a series right now. And if you're taking notes, I want you to write this down. Um, again, the notes, you guys, are on, it's on the app. If you have your phone, you have a tablet with you, right there you can follow along with the teaching. Even a lot of times we'll create like a fill in the blank. And you can fill in the blank even as I'm, as I'm teaching right now. But here's the title. We've been on this series now really since January. Pastor Marco really got a word from God. Here's the title. I am the one to reach the one. I am the one to reach the one. Whose responsibility is it to reach your loved ones? You. Me. I got to reach my family. I am the one. Look at your neighbor and tell them, you're the one. Tell the person behind you, you're the one. You're the one to reach the one. You're the one to reach that coworker. You're the one to reach that family member. You're the one. I got to give it up for our adopt a block San Bernardino. I got to give it up for adopt a block Pomona. Give them a round of applause. They are, they are reaching souls like no one's business. City Way, going, give it up for City Way, going out on Thursdays, cleaning the streets. And really, so many ministries that go out, and we're wearing these shirts right now. This, this is our motto reach the one for 21. We're going to reach the one. This is what we're doing. Easter's coming up. We're going to reach people. How many would like this shirt? Anybody want this? Now, hold on. You put your... I want to give it to a serious person. I'm going to go old school on you right now. How many have a Bible with you? That's old school, right, because everybody has cell phones today. How many have a Bible? Raise them. Raise them like you just, like you just care. All right, all right, all right. I'm going to go old school now. I come from an old school. Um, you have a Bible. You actually have a physical notepad that you're actually writing. You're not typing. You're writing. Raise your hand if you have a Bible and a notepad. Look at all these learners. Give them a round of applause. Look at that. I'm not done. I'm not done. This is for the serious people now. You have a Bible you have a physical notepad in your lap. You have a pen. Show me a pen. You're actually writing stuff down. You're not just typing. The other day I was trying to write something. I, I, I forgot how to write. Because I'm always typing stuff now. Okay, okay, we're not done. Bible, notepad, you got a pen. Here's old school. You got a beautiful highlighter. You're highlighting stuff. You got all that? And you're in the front row. That's yours. You can have it. That's yours. <laughs> Tell somebody next to you, you're the one. Go to Judges chapter 6. 
Go to Judges chapter 6. We're talking about the people of Israel. They're in bondage. If you missed the last few weeks, you got to hear Pastor Marco last week, the following week. I don't have time to tell the whole story. But the people of Israel, they're stuck. They're in bondage. They're messed up. The Midianites have come in and they've taken over. It's getting to the point, the Israelites, they try to plant something. They plant it. The Midianites come and they just take everything. I'm going to share this right now. Now, Pastor Marco shared it last week. Sin will always cause reduction. And maybe you've been experiencing reduction. Maybe you've been doing things that's maybe not right, not according to the Bible. You're experiencing uh, some reduction. I have good news. All those who call for help, God will help you. So whatever you're facing right now, God wants to help you. If you're stuck right now in a marriage and it's, it's not going well, God wants to help your marriage. You're in transition of a job. God wants to help you. In this scripture, now Judges chapter 6, verse 6, the people of Israel, like Pastor Marco said last week, they finally hit rock bottom. Has anybody ever hit rock bottom? And you've said, I'm done. I'm done doing things my way. I want to do things God's ways. So the people of Israel, they're there. They've hit rock bottom. Judges chapter 6, verse, look what they do. Judges chapter 6, verse 6. So Israel was reduced. Again, reduction. Sin causes reduction. The people of Israel were not obeying God. They were not obeying the law. They were not obeying the word. So now they're in reduction to the point of starvation. But I love this. Then the Israelites cried out to the Lord for help. Psalms chapter 34 verse 18, it says, the Lord is close to the brokenhearted. He saves those who are crushed in spirit. If you're feeling crushed today, if you're feeling down today, just call upon the name of God. Those who call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. If you need help, just tell somebody. I need some help. I'm messed up. And watch what God will do. So the people now, the Israelites, they're done. They're saying, man, we've done it our way. This is a disaster. I need help. We're in Pomona right now, and I got to go with them yesterday. Soon as I got out of my truck, some drunk guy just comes running to me. I don't know if he was going to tackle me. I don't know what he was doing. I said, kids, hang out for a second. Don't know what's going on. Just hang out for a second. And he just runs up to me. Someone stole me. He starts going off. And I could tell he's drunk. I could just smell the alcohol. And this is 10 o'clock in the morning, man. He's just drunk out of his mind. And I just kind of hugged. I said, sir, just relax for a second. I said, here we are here. I said, sir, God has heard your cry. That's why we're here today. God has heard your prayers. God has heard your cry. He's heard this block's cry. He's heard the city's cry. That's why we're here getting ready to establish a church in this neighborhood because God has heard your cry. And he was there. We prayed with them. And, and he, he did as best as he could. I calmed them down. He was banging on people's doors. Open up your door. Where's my cell phone at? I said, sir, you can't wake up people at 10 o'clock in the morning. But why are we there? Because God called us there. We're getting ready for Easter and getting ready for things. There are people that God wants you to reach, and they're calling out. Somebody help me. Somebody save me. I need help. I'm addicted. Would somebody help me? Who are the people that's going to help them? You and I are the people that's going to help them. I am the one that's going to reach the one. And today we're going to go over Gideon because now the people of Israel, they're done. They've hit rock bottom. They want change. And now God goes and calls Gideon to help save the people. But Gideon, like me and you, I don't know about you. Have you ever, uh, have you ever done something where God called you to do something and you're like, how can I do that? Can you raise your hand if God ever called you to do something like, it sounds a little crazy. I want you to do this. Go do that or start a business. Any business owner? Where are the business owners at? Do you remember when, when you first got that inclination to start a business and you were kind of just, just terrified? How can I start a business? We're going to 
just look at Gideon's life for a minute. This is a guy that God is saying, Gideon, you're the one to reach your people. So the angel comes to Gideon, and look how Gideon responses. So write this down. I'm going to give you three mindsets. Three mindsets that stop us from helping others. These are mindsets we have to overcome in order to help someone. There's going to be thoughts through your head. Well, should I invite my uncle to Easter? I don't know about my uncle. I've invited him ten times, and he cussed me out last time. And God is saying, ask one more time. So there's mindsets that can stop us. Here's mindset number one. A victim mentality. A victim mentality. Let's look at Judges chapter 6, verse 11. Look at Gideon. He starts bringing up. His victimization. Look what Gideon says. Judges 6, starting at verse 11. Then the angel of the Lord came and sat beneath the great tree of Ophrah. Not Oprah, Ophrah. Somebody just said it right now, Oprah's in the Bible. It's Ophrah. Which belonged to Joash of the clan of Abizer. Gideon, son of Joash, threshing wheat at the bottom of the winepress. To hide the grain from the Midianites. So here's Gideon. He's at the bottom of the wine press. He's trying to hide the grain. Because again, everything the Israelites try to grow, the Midianites come in and steal it. So here's Gideon trying to protect a little bit of what they have. Verse 12. The angel of the Lord appeared to him and said, mighty hero, the Lord is with you. Look at your neighbor and tell them, you're a mighty hero. I don't know if you know that. Yeah, 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 let that, let, that, let, let that sit in for a second, mighty heroes. Pastor, you don't know me. I just got high last Friday night, mighty hero. I just got out of jail last week, mighty hero. I just really messed up, I really messed up, mighty hero. The angel is saying, mighty heroes, time to get up. But look at Gideon, just like you and I, we could do this if we're not, we're not careful. Mighty hero, the Lord is with you. Here's Gideon now. He starts going into this victim mentality, a dangerous place to be, a dangerous place to stay. Look how Gideon responds to the angel. Sir, Gideon replied, if the Lord is with us, why has all this happened to us? victim mentality. You're saying God is with us? How is God with us? You see what's happened? He's talking to the angel. And where are all the miracles our ancestors told us about? Didn't they say the Lord brought us here out of Egypt? But now the Lord has abandoned us and handed us over to the Midianites. So the angel is saying, I've heard the cry. Gideon, you're the guy that's going to lead the charge. Come up, mighty hero. And he says, hero, I, I'm not no hero. And he goes into now a victim mentality. He goes, I thought, I thought God was going to, I thought he saved us from Egypt. Have you seen what we're going through? See, this victim mentality, what it does, it gets you to only focus on what you're going through. And now you can't focus on others or what they're going through. And I'm not trying to diminish anything you're going through or, or try to whitewash things you're going. You might be going through a lot. But don't let that stop your ministry. Don't let that stop the calling and purpose upon your life. Don't let that stop you from coming to church. Don't let that stop you from going to P12 and getting discipled. You know, my mother, she passed away this, I think it was about a year and a half ago. And man, I miss her to this day. I miss her. There's just some days I'm driving and I just start crying. I just miss her. It's probably not healthy, but I have on my phone, as soon as you, you know, what do you call it, the home screen, whatever you call it, my mom is right there. It's probably not that healthy to do because I'll just start crying looking at the home screen sometimes. But my father, um, he took it kind of tough, of course, when, not took, he took it very tough. They were married for 40-something years. And for the last year and a half, what my dad's been doing, he's just been traveling. He went back to Florida, that's where they lived for over 20 years. He's went back to Puerto Rico several times. That's where he was born. He was raised in St. Croix, the Virgin Islands. He's went there probably three or four times. 
So when I talked to him about, I don't know, maybe a week ago, he was in Florida, about seven, eight days. He's in Florida. That's where you at. I'm in Florida. I'm in a city called Wachula. I said, man, what do you do? He's a tiny little town. What are you doing in Wachula? He said, Rob, I'm just reaching souls. I said, okay, Dad. And we prayed. Man, amazing. God just using them. And I told him, you know, have you heard some of the teachings? He goes, he goes, no, I don't got those phones where I can listen to all you guys. I don't got one of those, those phones. I said, Dad. I said, Marco, your son, he heard from God, and this year he's entitled Reach the One for 2021. And my dad told me, he goes, man, that's what I do every day. I ask God, God, who do you want me to reach today? Can I tell you about a crazy story this week? He calls me for, I talk about reaching the one, and just saying yes and saying, God, use me. I wonder what would happen if we woke up every day and you and I said, God, send me that one person I'm supposed to pray for. Send me that one person that I'm supposed to encourage. Send me that one person that's lost today that I can lead them to salvation. And that's what my dad is doing every day. So the other day he calls me on Friday. He goes, hey, son. I say, how you doing? He said, I'm 30 minutes away. I'll be at your house in 30 minutes. I said, you were just in Florida. How could you be in my house in 30 minutes, Daddy? You were just in Florida. I had to go. I was on a mission. So he gets to my house. I don't know where he just pulls up. Dog's running out. You're taking care of the dog. I'm on a mission. I said, well, I said Dad, how did you end up here? Because he was saying he was going to Puerto Rico. I said, you didn't have to drive to California to go to Puerto Rico. You were in Florida. You could just took a plane from Florida. You could have, why drive here? Let me, he, goes, he goes, be quiet, boy. Let me tell you the story. I said, okay. He's in Florida, and he just kind of hears a name in his mind. He hears a name, and it's, the name is this, Orlando Cepeda. We have a pretty big audience. Does anybody know who Orlando Cepeda is? One person, okay, thank you. You know it now. Oh, you were here at 9 o'clock service. You're cheating. You're cheating. <laughs> Here's Hernando Cepeda. He played, I don't know if he played for several teams, but I know he played for one team. He played for the San Francisco Giants back in the 50s. He played with Willie Mays. Same field as these guys. He grew up in the town that my dad was born in. Talk about reaching the one and just asking God, God, my father, he could have just victim mentality. Why didn't God just heal my mom here? I'm just going to stay in this depression. Uh, this is what I'm going through. I can't reach you. You got to be careful for that victim mentality. So my father had to push against that victim mentality. So he's, Orlando Cepeda, he hears it. He's in Florida. He talks to a few guys. You guys know where Orlando is. He's still alive. Orlando Cepeda. And he hangs around some baseball people. And the guy said, I, I heard he was in San Francisco. Last time I heard he was sick. And he was actually homeless, living on the streets in San Francisco. That's the last I heard of Orlando Cepeda. My dad says, I got to go to San Francisco. He hops in his car. That's how I seen him on Friday. He's going cross country. He stops in New Mexico at a rest stop, just relaxing, chilling sleeping. He looks out the window and he sees this lady driving this big old diesel truck and she's backing that thing up like no one's business. She's just back. And my dad's looking because she gets out of the truck and she's this tiny little thing. My dad says she was so tiny. I'm like, how is she driving that truck? My dad says, I gotta go out there and talk to this lady. She's blowing my mind. He goes out to talk to this lady. He goes, hey, I just, you just, you're blowing my mind. I just want to encourage you. Great job with this big old diesel truck. They start talking. If we just say yes, if we could get past that victim mentality, write this down. Here's a second mentality that will stop us. It stopped Gideon. It's a I can't mentality. Write that down. First mentality is victim. It'll stop you every time. It'll stop you from ministry. It'll stop you from family. Stop you from relationships. Reaching the one. Next one is a I can't mentality. I can't do it. I can't go there. Who am I? We'll read the scripture in a moment. Let me finish this story. He's talking to this lady, and he goes, what are you doing? He's on my way to San Francisco. I, I, I just ha had to start. God's telling me. I have to go see Orlando Cepeda. She goes, what did you say? 
And she starts crying. She goes, who are you? Did you follow my truck here? Who are you? He goes, that's my family. Orlando just died about a year ago. He died. Out in San Francisco, he died. He goes, you're related to her? You're related? He goes, yeah. And then some young adult pops out of the truck. He goes, that's Orlando's cousin right there. I mean, Orlando's grandson. And, you, and he tells the lady, they're just having this God moment. It seems like something to read in the Bible. It's like so miraculous. They start crying. And my dad says, well, I guess I'm not here for Orlando. He's, he's, he's God. I must be here for you too. Are you saved? Do you know God? They're, they're just crying. This is such a God moment. They're just bawling their brains out here at this moment. And he goes, no, we're backslidden. We've been running from God. We need God. Right there in that truck stop, he's on his way to San Francisco, talked to Orlando, Orlando Cepeda, stops in New Mexico, and reaches two of his family members for Jesus Christ. Give Jesus a shout of praise. Look at your neighbor and tell them, you're the one. Tell the, tell the person behind you, you're the one. You're the one to reach them. You're the one to reach your family. Easter's coming up. I want us to get intentional. Let's write down 10 people. Let's write down 10 people that we can invite for Easter. And we've been saying, just bring one. You can invite 10. Bring one. Bring one couple to Easter. Bring one couple to the marriage challenge. But watch out for these mindsets, victim mentality, number one. Number two, we said it, I can't mentality. Look what Gideon tells the angel. He tells the Lord, Judges 6, 14 and 15. Then the Lord turned to him and said, go with the strength you have and rescue Israel from the Midianites. I am sending you, Gideon. But here's Gideon, and, and, I, and I've been there. But Lord, but Lord, Gideon implied, how can I rescue Israel? My clan is the weakest in the whole tribe of Manasseh, and I'm the least in my entire family. God can't use me. He's talking to an angel. The angel's trying to convince him, dude, God has called you. Get ready. And I can, I can imagine this conversation. I'd be, thank, I, if I was God, I would have said, this is the wrong person. Let's move on to the next one. <laughs> you, you ever worked with someone? You're thinking, oh, my God, let's get somebody else in that position. <laughs> right. The Lord is so patient, he's there, and he's talking to Gideon. Gideon, God is calling you. Judges 6, 16, the Lord said to him, I will be with you, Gideon. I am with you. And you will destroy the Midianites if you were fighting against one. I am with you, says the Lord. Maybe you're trying to start a business. You're in your mind, you're racing. I, I can't do that. You're right. You can't do it alone, but we can do all things through Christ Jesus who strengthens us. I can't do it alone, but I can do everything with Jesus. We can't start a church in San Bernardino. Jesus has to start this church in San Bernardino. We can't buy me and Pastor Marco alone, we can't buy no $8 million building. But with Jesus and all of us together, we can buy property after property after property. Because with God, all things are possible. I wonder what we could do if we just took off the limits off our mind. That's why I love the youth group's name, LLY. No limit. The only limits we have is the ones you and I create. You could try to put God in a box. He can't go in no box. God is saying, I'm with you. Start that business. I'm with you. I love what you said earlier, Kurt. Amazing. Come up real quick, Kurt. Come up fast. I just like to hear, this, hear from the spirit. Come up real fast, fast. I wasn't planning on this. Just really quick. Just come up. I can't. I know we weren't planning this. You said it this morning. Just share it because this is, we got to get over this. I can't. Share what happened with you at school really quick. What happened? 
Um, I had to take an exam, and I haven't taken an exam in 28 years. <laughs> and uh, it's, it's a very difficult exam. And so I did all the work, and I'm a week out, and I set up a study plan, and I'm you know, studying four to seven hours a day and doing everything I'm supposed to do, and I know I'm supposed to pass this test, and I'm praying and fasting. I made that commitment going into the week, and three days in, 20-something hours into studying, it's like I, can, I read it, and then I go take the test, and it's like I didn't even read it. Does anybody know what I'm talking about? It, nothing's sticking. It's just terrible. And all these voices start coming at me. You, you're too old. You can't study like that. You can't pass this test anymore. You can't do this. You can't do that. All these voices. And I just said, well, okay, I started thinking, where, where do you go when you are faced with those voices and that fear? And you're putting the work in as well, but you're not getting the result. And we learn at church, we go to the word. We go to Jesus, right? So we, I just start quoting scriptures over and over. You have plans for me to prosper me, not to harm me, to give me a future, to give me hope. When I'm weak, you're strong, Lord. I depend on you. You're my rock. You're my strength. You're my refuge. And I'm just declaring, 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 and still doing the work. And uh, on Friday, my last day, I got a 74 and a 71, and you need a 75 to pass this test. And I got 74, 71 on the practice test. And the next morning, the test is in the morning. So that night I go to bed and I'm listening to the terms while I'm sleeping. You know, I just putting them on. And God wakes me up at 3.30 and he says, you don't need that. Put on praise and worship. And so I put on praise and worship and I worship him from 3.30 to 5. And then I do my notes and then I get down there and I get to the testing center. I go in and I take the test. There's 125 questions. 39, I really don't know the answers to clearly. So I, I check the boxes, and I do the math. I'm like, if I miss 39, do I pass? No. So I'm like, oh, boy. And I'm an hour, 26 minutes left, and I just, God puts on my heart, just pray before every question. And so I know they have a video camera, and they're sitting there watching me, and they must have thought I was a loony because I'd click the button, and then i put my head down on the desk, and, Lord, you promise hard work brings profit. I've worked hard, Lord. You got to deliver. This is for your glory, not for my glory. And then, then midway through, I kept praying for myself, and I prayed 39 separate prayers. And midway, I started going, this is selfish. So then I started going, thank you, Lord, for the Way World Outreach Church. Thank you for Pastor Robert, Pastor Marco. Thank you for the people I serve in ministry. Thank you for my parents. Thank you, thank you, thank you. And then the last four or five, it got to a point where I said, Lord, you say that the prayers of righteous men and women availeth much. And there are people praying for me right now. And I declare this victory. This is your victory, not my victory. And, and I just keep pushing the buttons and doing my thing. And when I'm done, I hit the score, and I got an 89%. And the best part, I'll just tell you real quick. The, I finished, and the lady goes, you look so happy. I said, I'm so happy. I can't stand it. And she's like, well, what test did you take? And I told her, she goes, that's the hardest test we have. And I said, she goes, what'd you get? I, go, I got an 89. She goes, that's the highest score I've seen. And so I used that as an opportunity to reach the one. And I said, let me tell you why that was the highest score you've seen. And I started to give Jesus all the praise. I got her name and number and gave her a thing for Easter service. And she went, I said, would you take a picture of me for my wife? And she went outside and took a picture. That's more than you need. But God is good, man. If you, if you believe God could do anything, give God a big shout of praise. You're not too old to take no tests with God. <laughs> you have to get past the victim mentality. Okay? You're going through stuff. Gideon, the people of Israel, a mess, a disaster. Don't let what you're going through now stop you. You're going through a tragedy. Don't let it stop you. Say, God, I'm going through this, but I'm not going to allow the victim mentality to settle in. I'm moving forward. Secondly, I can, I can with Jesus. I can with God. And only that, you'll have the highest score this building has ever seen because of God. And here's number three. 
These are mindsets, again, that will stop you from reaching the one. They will stop you in so many other things in life. But we know our main topic today is talking about reaching the one. Here's the third one. Be careful. A doubtful mindset. A doubtful mind. You start to doubt. You start to double think too much stuff. Well, I don't know. Is God really doing this? Is God? Uh. See, doubt and procrastination, they're cousins. They come together. So when you start doubting, what we start doing, we start procrastinating. And I don't know about you, when we start to procrastinate, well, and we do this. I'm praying about it. Okay, that's good. Pray about it. Have you got confirmation yet, Pastor? I got three confirmation. I'm waiting for the fourth one. I'm waiting for that, that fourth one. Did you get, I got, Pastor, you know, God's number is seven, so I'm waiting for seven. <laughs> Once God confirms it, run a hundred miles per hour. Once God confirms it, run a hundred miles per hour. Because once you doubt, procrastination will come, then you'll never take that test. You'll never reach anybody for God. You'll never get involved in ministry. I thank God that we have a pastor that when God said it's time to leave your business, it's time to start a church, and you have to go now. I'm here thankful that Pastor Marco went. I'm thankful for our leadership and doubt. Look at Judges 6, 17. This is Gideon. God is saying, I'm with you. You're okay. You're the one. You sure I'm the one? Look at all the stuff we're going through. You sure I'm the one? I can't. I'm the weakest. I'm the weakest of the whole bunch. Maybe you're here right now. I didn't go to college. I didn't do this. I didn't do that. God said, I'm not looking at all that. I'm calling you. It, 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 it's time now. I can't reach my, my, my aunt for Easter. Yes, you can. Ask her. How about that co-worker? It's tough. Ask that co-worker. There's a fear maybe coming upon you to ask them to come to church, and you've been wanting to ask that person to come. Bring them, ask them, because God's spirit's going to touch them. The doubtful mindset. Gideon replied, if you are truly going to help me, show me a sign to prove that's really the Lord speaking to me. He starts having this conversation now, and you got to read the end of the story. It's hilarious how the battle takes place. They don't even lift up a sword. All they basically, read the story at the end. I'll challenge you that. How many of you read the story at the end? You'll read it because I don't have time. Read the story. Gideon, he starts now doubting. If it's really you, do this. And look what he does. Go down to verse, I think it's 30, yeah, 36. Gideon said to God, if you are truly going to make me or use me to rescue Israel as you promised, Prove it this way to me. I will put a wool fleece, I'll put a blanket there on the floor, on the threshing floor tonight. If the fleece is wet with dew in the morning, but the ground is dry, then I will know that you're going to help me rescue Israel as you promised. And that is exactly what happened. When Gideon woke up in the morning, he squeezed the fleece. And then Gideon said, no, no, no let's do it the other way. If it's really you, if God is really calling me, I got another fleece. And he starts having this whole, you got to read, he's having this whole conversation with the angel. We'll do this, we'll do that. We'll do, prove to me, God. We'll, and God, an angel, they're just doing all these miracles. I wonder how many of us right now, we're doubting and we're questioning. And God is getting ready to do the biggest thing in you he's ever seen in your life. But we're still not stepping out. We're questioning, well, should I? Yes. Should I join discipleship? Yes. Should you join discipleship? Should you join discipleship? Yes. Should you go to church as much as you can? Yes. Should you reach people for 2021? Yes. Should you read your Bible? Yes. Should you sign up for a ministry? Should you get involved in church? Yes. Why? Why should you get involved in church? That's what we do. We're servants. Somebody's waiting for you. Maybe you're supposed to be helping out kids world right now. There's a kid waiting for you right now. You're supposed to get involved in the youth group. Somebody is waiting for you right now. Reaching the one. Should have reached the one? Yes. Maybe this week you're going to run into that Orlando Cepeda story where you pray. And you're going to write down the ten names. And you're going to say, God, I'm writing ten names down of people that I want to see get saved this year. I want to see them come to Easter service with me. 
here's a family, they need to come to marriage challenge. Here's a single person that needs to come to me and get intentional and watch what God can do. This church right now, we haven't seen, we're barely, we're barely seeing the tip of the iceberg of what God's going to do. If Jesus tarries a little longer, we're going to reach so many souls. We're going to break records from 2020, from 2019. We're going to reach more souls this year than we've ever reached in the history of the Way World Outreach. Because God is saying, I'm with you. Don't procrastinate. Don't doubt. Don't stay in that victim mentality. Start to move forward. Everybody bow their head and close their eyes for a second. Nobody leaving. Just give us a couple more minutes and we're even ending early today. You might see some ushers and greeters moving. They're just getting in position. Every head bow, every eyes closed. Let's first deal with this topic right now. Every head bow, every eyes closed. I am the one to reach to one. Can you say that right there at your seat? Say, I am the one to reach to one. Say, God, show me the 10 people that I will invite for our Easter services. Show me the people I'm supposed to invite for marriage challenge. Lord, this week, use me to reach the one. Thank you, Father. Use me. Use me, God. You know, next week we're going to have a bunch of flyers. We're going to have, we're just going to order a whole bunch, 20, 30, 50,000 flyers. Next week we're going to have those. Again, practical application of what we're talking about. This week we'll have these flyers. We're going to give you material on the phone. It's already on the app. Invite somebody right there. You could sign somebody right there for marriage challenge. You don't need no flyer on the app. Talking to someone, hey, I want you to come to marriage challenge with me. You're single. You got to get prepared for marriage. If you don't prepare, man, it's not going to be good. You need to prepare. Sign them up right there on the app. Put their name in. The team here at the church, they'll call them, invite them, keep them updated for the next four weeks. But let's be intentional on inviting. Now, here's the last thing. I want to make sure, from all the way from my right over here, oh, everybody's such a big crowd. It's awesome. Online. Everybody here. I want to make sure before you leave this campus today, before you leave this building, that you're on your way to heaven. I want to make sure that you're right with God. We've had services where we come and people pass away within 24 or 48 hours. With a crowd this size and the influence, all the people that we know now, it's every week almost now. Every couple of weeks someone passes, we're doing, and we did like four funerals the last three weeks, pass. Because of the association, all of us know people, we have friends and family. I'm doing funerals for people's co-workers, don't even know who they are, doing funerals because it's just association, it's just who we know. But let me ask you a question. You're online, let me ask you a question. You're watching at home, maybe you're in a truck right now, you're driving, or you pulled over and God's talking to you. Let me ask you this question. If you were to die today, where are you going to spend eternity? Where are you going? Are you going to heaven? It's a pastor, man. I, I want to think that I'm going. I don't know. You might be saying, I'm not right with God. It's time for me today. I need to sell out for God. Or maybe you say, Pastor, I used to go to church. I used to get involved. I had this passion before, but I've lost it. I've lost the passion. And I just want to come back to God. I want to make things straight before I leave today. And I want God to forgive me of all my sins. Friends, family, how do you get to heaven? There's only one way. You have to receive Jesus as your Savior. How do we get to heaven? You got to accept. You got to put your faith in Jesus. Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. Nobody comes to the Father except going through me. You have to go through Jesus. It's not a church. It's not about a religion. When you and I die, we stand before God and God asks you, hey, why should I let you in? You can't say this. Man, I attended the way every Sunday. God's going to be like, that's a great church, but that's the wrong answer. You don't go to heaven because you went to the way. Oh, why should I let you to heaven? Well, I was, a, I was the best Baptist, the best Pentecostal you ever meet. 
There's nowhere in the Bible that says only the Baptists go to heaven. Only the Pentecostals go to heaven. It's not about a religion. I was Catholic. There's nowhere in the Bible where it says if you are a Catholic, only the Catholics go. It has nothing to do with the religion. It had all to do with the relationship with Jesus Christ. It has all to do with Jesus. So here we go. You say, Pastor, man, that's me. I need to get right with God. I've been running. I need to come back. I want to be forgiven of my sins. I want to make sure if I die today that I go to heaven. I want to put my faith in Jesus. I need to get right today. I want everybody to stand up at this time. Everyone stand up. I'm going to count to three. You're saying, that's me. I need God. I want to get right with God. I want Jesus to forgive me. I want to make Jesus the Lord of my life. I need to surrender to God. Raise your hands when I count to three. One, two, three. Raise your hands right now. Say, that's me, Pastor. I need to get right with God. I need God. See a couple hands over there. See a hand there. See a hand there. See like three hands way over there in the back. I can see a hand over there. Yeah, good job. Good job. See the hand right there, yeah? All those that just raised your hands, even if you didn't raise me, say, man, I need God. All those who raised your hands, I want you to come forward, meet me here in the front section, and I'm going to lead you in a prayer today to give your life to God, to surrender everything to God. Come on down. Got two, three, four, five, six, seven. You're coming down, sir. Yeah, come on down. Give him a round of applause. We got eight. We got nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14. Good job. 15, 16, 17. You come up. 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, 27. Say, Pastor, why are you counting? Because heaven is counting right now. They're recording all the names right now, pretty in a second in the Lamb's Book of Life. That was 27. We got two more come down. 28, 29, 30, 31, 32, 33, 34. What's up, little man? 35. Give God a round of applause. 35. Now, everybody here in the front, I'm going to lead you in a prayer. You're just going to repeat after me. All those who confess Jesus as Lord, you're saved. Everyone that believes in his heart, that he died and God raised him from the dead, you're saved. That's what we're going to do. We're going to declare that. I believe Jesus died. I need forgiveness. As soon as you say that prayer, you're saved. Your name gets recorded in what's called the Lamb's Book of Life. After we're done praying, this should be somebody maybe next to you, in front of you. They're just going to exchange info, pray for you, and then let you know what your next step is. Your next step is starting at the way. That's our classes here to make you strong and helping your faith with God. Starting at the way. Maybe you're at your seats, you haven't taken starting. Sign up. How do I sign up? Go on the app and just sign up for starting. We'll get you into classes to get you going. Every head bow, every eyes closed. This is beautiful. And maybe you're at your seat right now. You're saying, man, I should have went up there. What am I doing? It's okay. Just say that prayer right there at your seat. You're going to get saved. You're watching this online. Don't miss this moment. Don't miss this moment. You're at work right now. You're kind of listening, just being at work. Don't miss this moment. Repeat this prayer. God will touch you right there in that workplace. He'll touch you right there in that living room, that kitchen, that bedroom, that sick bed, that hospital. He'll touch you right now. Every head by every eyes closed. 
Say, Jesus, I ask forgiveness of all my sins. I repent of all the wrong that I've done. Jesus, I believe that you came to this earth and you died on the cross so I can have eternal life. Jesus, come into my heart. Become my Lord and Savior. From this day forward, I am a follower. I am a disciple of Jesus Christ. Holy Spirit, fill me so I can live for you. And God, set me free from all my bad habits, all my addictions. Set me free today. I need help. I am saved. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. All those that came up, congratulations. Those that sit at your seats, those that said that prayer online, you are saved. Online, go to igotsaved.com. igotsaved.com will walk you through the steps for starting at the way. You can even do starting at the way at home online as well. Pastor Marco is back on Wednesday. Um, How to be happy, part three. It is online. We're not in person yet for Wednesdays. Wednesday online, how to be happy, part three. You don't want to miss it. But if God is for you, who could come against you? Have a great week.